All right. Hello, everybody. I think we are live. Hello and welcome to today's OET official live speaking master class. First of all, I just want to welcome everyone from wherever you are in the world today. And thank you so much for joining. Can you just comment wherever you are watching this live video today? Can you send up when seeking, please. And it's very important that you can hear me and see me. I don't want there to be a session today. <laughs> I really hope you are or listen to anything I am saying. So I'm watching the comments and making sure everyone uh, is able to do so. Of course, you might be watching on the Swoosh English, Facebook, and YouTube channels. You could be watching on the OBT official uh, Facebook and YouTube channels as well. So we'll make sure everyone can do so. And I believe everyone can because everyone is selling in comments. We've got lots of people. Here today, I'm just going to say hello to everyone. We've got students from Ukraine, students from Pakistan, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, and the Philippines, Nepal, India, etc. etc. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, of course, and for joining me today. So I'm looking forward to get into this session today. It's going to be lots of fun with lots of um, things going to come today. Regarding all the time of speaking, we hope everyone has this really deep preparation. It's been so fun too. So let's get stuck into today's session. I can't wait to show you what we're going to be doing today. So today's lesson ends with the eight guys and We're going to learn and review the scoring criteria for all the things we learned first and foremost. We're then going to do a little bit about learning the appropriate kinds of questions that you should ask. Or over the skipping and putting open and closed, as well as the kind of question that you should avoid for the greatest speaking clarity or your own as well. That's it. And let's we're going to take part in or listen to some over to your voice with some students who definitely benefit from doing both today, either getting a chance to do a role play or listen to feedback and reflect if you have good one of the if I'm doing a role play or your to the exam. And there will be a brief QA for going. So make sure you stay with until the very end of the rights session. So that you can ask any questions that you have about the content of today's OET All Star session and about your OET preparation, about social English, about what I'm eating today and tonight, whatever you want to ask. I'll be simply speaking about This session will be around about 75 to 90 minutes. So make sure you stay with so first and foremost, I'd like to get to know everyone who's in these sessions today. Everyone who is commenting, thank you very much for doing so. So let me know, guys, um, what do you plan to do when you pass your own terms? I want to know what makes you stick, what was making you prepare for this exam, pass it, and what is your dream and goal in that through taking your own to the exam, and how you pass this exam change your life so there's a life change on this and it is completed and passed so let me know in the chat box guys please what is um what is um, your big reason for doing so i'm just saying that seeing as we can say my audio isn't clear let me just make a few said let me just make a couple of changes let me know guys is that better now send me into the chat box i've made a slight change with my audio settings hopefully that will be the case and um, so, yeah, just let me know in the chat box, guys, if that is better. I hope it is. So anyway, guys, as I was saying, let me know. And um, what do you plan to do? Fantastic. We're good to go. Thank you very much, guys. So what do you plan to do when you pass your OET exam, guys? Let me know in the chat box, please. What do you plan to do when you pass your OET exam? How will it get better for you and how will things change for you overall? Okay, so we're seeing some comments coming in here saying, uh, <laughs> everyone's saying, yep, yeah, it's better now. Not a problem, guys, not a problem. Very, very happy to see so. Okay, so, yep, yeah, I've got some comments coming in here saying um, that um, you're looking to move to the UK and work as a doctor and a nurse. Uh, Vienna has said, apply for a working visa. That's fantastic. Good to hear. Where are you applying for a working visa? Um, Vienna, let me know. We got Jojo on the YouTube channel has said I'm taking my plab. Faze wants to register in the UK. Joan wants to work in the UK as well. Lovely comments, guys. Keep them coming. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Evie is planning to take the NMC immediately and take the CPT exam. And I'll take a couple of more comments here as well, guys. 
Um, and Jarena wants to move to the UK as well. So the, the reason why I asked this, guys, is I want you to keep that dream at the forefront of your OET process and your OET application, because that's what's going to make sure that you come out of this process much better mentally, physically, spiritually, with the passing score that you want at the end of this process. So keep that dream in your head and you will do what you can to pass and do it. So guys, uh, on to the topic today. Um, OET speaking is, of course, the masterclass that we're doing today. Um, but I want to know what is the biggest challenge that you have with your OET speaking? Let me know in the chat box. What's your biggest challenge with OET speaking? Let me know in the chat box. What is your biggest challenge? What do you find difficult? What do you want to uh, support and help with? What do you want to overcome with this session and the future OBT work that you're going to be doing? So let me know in the chat box. Okay, I'm seeing some comments coming in. Fluency is a big thing. How to maintain that rate of speech and keep it going throughout both role plays. I'm seeing some comments here for anxiety and nervousness. All very natural, guys, when it comes to speaking with confidence and flair. The more you practice and the more appropriately you practice, your fluency will simply get better. Chen Tu is said to organize words and create words. So having the appropriate level and range of vocabulary is very important to OBT speaking as well. And one more, KC has said accomplishing the tasks, how to fully complete the role play card and to accurately explain the task cards as you're going through in the role play. And thank you everyone else for all of your comments coming in as well. I am reading them all very, very quickly. These are all legitimate reasons for your OET preparation as well, guys. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail about the scoring criteria in a moment, and I'll explain how all of these concerns are valid and how you can ensure that you score as well as you can in the OET exam to score as highly as you can in those areas. So thank you very much for telling me your concerns. Now, quiz. Let's see what you know about OET at this point, OET speaking. I uh, There are two different sets of OET speaking criteria. Who can tell me what are the two criteria for OET speaking? Let me know in the chat box. What is the criteria? What are the criteria? And bonus points if you can tell me not just what the two types of criteria are, but what are the sub criteriums inside? Let me know in the chat box, guys, wherever you're commenting today, who can tell me what they are. And take your time, think about it. You might be new to OET preparation at this point, and you're not quite familiar with them. My advice is to get familiar with this criteria. Know it like the back of your hand. Know the benchmarks and the standards that you have to pivot and apply your OET speaking to in your exam. So let me know if you can tell me. Anyone gonna throw some comments in? Fantastic, here we go, some are coming in now. We've got it, guys. Uh, a lot of the YouTubers are right on it and Siraj has also said it too. I'm gonna to actually bring your comment up here. Shiraj has said a clinical communication criteria and a linguistic criteria. Well done, Siraj, and well done, Remya, for giving me the first answer that we need as well. Fantastic. So that is correct, guys. There are linguistic and the clinical communication criteria. Now think to yourself, do you know these criteria and do you know them well? Because that's what you need to do in your OBT preparation. Know how to score as highly as you can in each area. So let's just go into some of the criteria very briefly. I'm gonna give my overview of what they are and what you can do to score as highly as you can in each section. So I'll bring this full screen so everyone can see nice and clearly. So for linguistic, we have intelligibility, fluency, appropriateness of language, and resources of grammar and expression. So intelligibility is the impact of your pronunciation and your intonation and accents on how clearly the listener understands you. So you're thinking about your um, pronunciation, you know, the various sounds that you can produce in the English language. Okay, think of your vowel sounds, your consonants, your blends. If there's any sounds that you find tricky, work on them. Intonation, 
your word stress, your sentence stress, how your intonation rises and falls at the end of the sentence, in the middle of the sentence, learn the various intonation patterns, and I'm sure that you are replicating them when you speak. And then finally, your accent. Do you have a thick accent? Does it impede understanding? Now, myth for OET. You don't have to speak with a native English speaking accent, but neutralize your accent if you can by drawing out your sounds and just speaking a little bit slower, a bit like what I'm doing today as an Irish person. I have to neutralize my accent when speaking to everyone who's not really from Ireland, so to say. So keep that in mind, guys. Okay, now move on to fluency. Now, common, fifth I, common myth I hear about fluency, and that is that fluency is all about speed. Well, yes, speed's one part of it, but there's also smoothness of your speech as well. So you want to be able to speak as clearly as you can by maintaining a, um, a consistent rate of speech, but you also want to ensure that you are linking the various parts of the grammatical structures of your sentences together appropriately when you speak as well. So top tip for speaking and smoothness for fluency would be think about the speed that you speak at in your native language, just slow it down a little bit, just a little bit to give your tongue a chance to catch up with your brain, so to say. So don't have to speak super fast. Speak at a pace that you can find comfortable to maintain as well as you can. Okay. Now let's look at appropriateness of language. So it's the impact of your language tone and professionalism on your listeners' understanding and comfort. AKA, do you sound so they like a your profession, not too formal, not too informal? Where is the mix? And then finally, resources of grammar and expression. So you're actually assessed on two areas for this, it includes your level aka the complexity of the grammar and vocabulary choices that you're using, but also the range that you're using, as well as the accuracy, okay? So you want to be using a variety of complicated structures uh, as for communication purposes as accurately as you can, and you also want to keep that range going as well. So think about your use of simple, compound, and complex sentences. Think about the appropriate vocabulary you're going to use. Think about your use of articles, prepositions, etc etc that will be assessed in your language essentially your grammar so guys that is the clinical communication criteria sorry the linguistic criteria let's now get into the clinical communication criteria which is divided into five different sections so we have relationship building understanding and incorporating providing structure information gathering and information giving so first of all relationship building which is the impact of your choice of opening to the conversation and demonstration of empathy and respect on your listener's comfort. So how well can you get the patient involved in the conversation? How well can you make them want to speak to you about whatever is ailing them, whatever is troubling them, and having a suitable conclusion to the role play consultation itself? Good way is to open up that conversation nice and welcomingly. Hello, how are you? How is your day? How may I help you? something around those lines. Empathy, rapport, and trust is important with this criteria. Then we have understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective. So how to involve the patient in the, in the conversation and um, how to get them speaking and get them answering. So you need to be asking lots of questions for this criteria. That's what we're speaking about today. Lots of open and closed questions to get them involved, get them speaking. You must lead the conversation and maintain that flow of speech as well, while simultaneously developing that rapport and that empathy at the same time. Okay, then we have providing structure. So how can you organize the information you provide and introduce new topics for discussion on your listeners' understanding? So this criteria really assesses your ability to go through the role play in a nice orderly fashion and complete it within about five minutes. But in addition to that as well, it's how you sequence and structure the advice that you are given throughout the role play card as well. How do you use signposting devices to transition into a new point? How do you break down long, complicated pieces of information, such as giving treatment advice, or how to demonstrate a procedure that you want to follow through as well? How can you order it and break it down? Then we have information gathering, which is the type of questions that you ask and how the listener responds to your listener's understanding. So think about the questions we're gonna actually go through today, open, close, gathering information. And then simultaneously, once you gather that information, you have to give it back. 
So how do you provide this information and check for understanding? Everything is being understood in the listener's comfort and understanding. So we're gonna really focus a lot on the last two criteria today in this session, information gathering and information giving, because it's all about questions that we can ask, the questions that we can ask to gather information and the questions that we can ask, that we can ask, yes, sorry, to clarify that information is being understood by the patient in the various consultations that we have, guys. So hopefully you, you enjoyed that little mini breakdown of the criteria. Okay, so let's get stuck in to our mini lesson now. We're actually gonna go through the different kind of questions that we should and shouldn't be asking in the OET exam. So question type number one that we should be asking are open questions, okay? So what exactly is an open question, guys? An open question is precisely that. It is a question that does, um, that gives you freedom to speak openly regarding the question topic. There's no set answer, there's no, there's no pathway into answering the question in a closed sense. They're open, they can speak about anything, and they're used really to start the conversation and get the conversation off to a good opening start, so to say, okay? So why should we use open questions for the OBT exam and for our clinical communication in general? Well, first and foremost, we use to gather information. We can ask open questions to gather information about symptoms, about routines, about previous medical history, even to establish rapport, how someone's feeling, for example. So we need to ask lots of them for that information. We also want to do that to clarify and follow up on additional information and give more detail. So we've asked a question about something, they've given the answer. We want more information where they can uh, openly speak about it as well. So we typically use open questions, as you can see at the beginning of the particular conversation point in the role play card. It also allows the patient to offer opinions and sentiments on their condition, etc. AKA they're speaking up openly on a topic and giving the freedom of information to you. They offer more accurate information and actionable insights for the professional because you're getting all of that information which you can process and proceed and then take that forward in the conversation itself. And as I said, it creates a dialogue of rapport with the patient while also allowing the professional to still steer the conversation. When you're asking the open questions, you're giving the patients plenty of speaking room, so to say, but you're in control about how they are typically answered. Okay, so here's a few examples of a few open questions that we can use. So how would you describe your pain? The question, the, the patient can speak in openly about this scenario, how they would feel. How long have you been experiencing these symptoms? An open question, which they can speak about the length of the symptoms <clears throat> and even the severity of the symptoms as well. How do you feel about the suggested treatment? So as a, an expression of opinion question that we're asking as well, the patient is feel free to open and speak about these questions. <clears throat> Sorry, what are you currently doing to alleviate your symptoms as well? The patient can speak about what they're doing to make the symptoms better and feel better about the process as well. Okay, so there's a few examples of a few different open questions. Notice, note the question stem word, how, 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 and what, and note what, they're, what we're trying to do with these kind of questions as well. You need to be very, very familiar and happy with asking a variety of different open questions in the OBT exam. So let's analyze a role play card here very, very quickly. Okay, we got the community health center, an 18 year old patient, and we have the tasks on the right hand side. I will bring this full screen in a moment, guys. And um, so I want you to have a quick look through this role play card here and just think what open questions could be asked in this scenario. Have a brief read through and think about what kind of open questions might be asked in this scenario here in particular. So scroll through the information here in the task card. Okay, we've got find out details about the patient's panic attacks, symptoms, duration, previous occurrences, etc. Explore possible triggers on the panic attacks, give reasons for the patient's symptoms, reassure the patient about the panic attacks, advise the patient to attend the community health center. So have a look through this, this will be all part of your planning in the OET speaking exam, your three minutes of preparation time, and think what kind of questions could you ask based in this scenario? What kind of open questions in particular could you ask in this scenario? Throw your comments in, guys. I'll go through them in a second. 
with a few suggestions, but throw your comments in here and practice creating some questions yourself out of this particular scenario. Okay, looking forward to seeing some of your questions. Okay, right, so your questions are coming in, guys. Keep them coming. I'm just gonna show a few suggestions that I have here at Swoosh English. Compare them to your own suggestions as they come in. So for example, we can ask, how long have you experienced these panic attacks, okay? So we want to find out the details about the patient's panic attacks. You know, we can just start by asking, how long have you been experiencing to assess the severity of the scenario? What do you think causes them? Because they've talked about previous occurrences, et cetera, as well, that allows us to get any information on the patient's lifestyle or their clinical scenario that allows you to have more information on the scenario itself. How do you feel when you experience them? Then, okay. So, how do you feel when you experience them? Okay, we in role play card point number three here: feeling anxious, nervous, and fearful. That's what we're trying to elicit from the patient this information, which allows us then to give more information. And what do you currently do to alleviate these episodes? What do you currently do to make them feel better? Okay. So, one of the suggestions here at the end is, of course what um, we can do here to make the patient feel better. You can elicit that information to begin with, rather than just tell them these things and double check if they're doing any of these things too. So guys, let's compare your own questions, of course, um, to the ones, the sample answers that I have here. Did you think of any other examples? Throw your comments into the chat box. My team and I will be very happy to read them and give you some um, information on them as well. But well done if you got some of those questions or any others at the same time. All right, so that's open questions. We now understand why we need to ask them and how we can use them in the role play cards they too. Okay, just gonna drop one comment here from Siraj who said, could you tell me what sort of problems have you been experiencing? Yep, that's a good open question. They're very open about the problems itself and it's also very grammatically well-structured, Siraj. Great question, well done. So let's move on now to, um, question type number two that you should be employing in the OBT exam, and these are closed questions. So what's the difference between an open question and a closed question? Well, closed questions are much more focused and they allow you to choose and offer a limited set of responses beforehand as they will typically warrant a yes, no answer. So much more closed and much more focused. So why should we be using closed questions? That says open, sorry guys, that should be closed questions, my apologies. So we want to do that to give information and check for understanding. More about that to come. To probe for further information and clarifying details. So we're focusing in on more information about a particular point that we have beforehand in a very controlled, closed environment to acquire very specific information, very, very, very specific information in a short answer, or even to bring a particularly difficult conversation or topic to a close. We may be signposting to the patient that we're moving on to the next topic, and this will be just closing up and giving some clarity on the matter. So here are a few examples of some closed questions that we can ask. Have you experienced these symptoms before? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Closed, short answer. Would you like to hear about your treatment options? Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Is that what you are looking for? Yes, no. Note that that's probably a checking for understanding style question to see if the patient is okay with the information that they have received and they can confirm or deny it. Does this even answer your question? Does this answer your question? The patient says yes or no. If they say yes, great, you can move on to the next part of the role play. If they say no, that's a chance for you to follow up with more clarity on the situation for ease of their understanding. And finally, a common one that we use for checking for understanding and ensuring that everything is okay with the patient, with the information that's been given, is this okay for you? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. So take a note of the, the nature of these kind of questions and how they will be answered and also the use of them in that scenario too. So like the first role play card, guys, we're gonna have a look at the, the same card. And uh, actually it's a different card, sorry, a different role play card. And we're going to have a look at what closed questions could be asked in this scenario, okay? So what kind of closed questions 
could be asked in this scenario. My apologies if that says open again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to edit that out. This should be closed. I'm going to write here in my really bad handwriting, guys, my bad mouse handwriting. There we go. And we're fixed. What closed questions could be asked in this scenario? Okay. So once again, like last time, guys, please just um, have a read through the role play card here down on the right hand side. Have a look at the kind of questions and information that you want to elicit from the patient in this scenario. Think about how they can be closed and check for more understanding. They're going to warrant a yes, no style answer. Throw your comments into the chat box with any questions that you have made. We'll be reading them. And then I will follow up in a moment with some suggestions from us at Swoosh English. Okay, so I'll just read through some of the task card here as we go along. Find out about the patient's symptoms and concerns. Explore the patient's lifestyle. Discuss the possible significance of the symptoms um, and all the information that's inside that. Briefly explain diabetes, insulin not produced, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Outline the next steps: diagnostic, blood test, return visit, or results, etc. Have a look through and throw your closed questions in. They might be a bit easier to ask than the open questions. They might not. It depends how you get on with this task. There's a good there's a good comment from Tatiana. Is this manageable for you? Great comment, Tatiana. Thank you very much. Um, that's a good one. Uh, any more coming in? Uh, do you sleep well? Thank you. Could you tell me what you are doing for a living, says Mojapna. That's more of an open question because that's not a yes, no answer, Mojapna. How often do you exercise? Would be an open question to Dilip. Um, but we have Meg has said, is this the first time you have felt this way? Yes or no? Oh, Dilip's got a good question there. Do you exercise? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Thank you very much, guys. Great comments coming in. Let's compare them to some sample answers now here. For example, have you experienced these symptoms before? I believe someone asked that question already. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Do you know much about the two types of diabetes? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Okay, well, then I'll explain more of that to you, depending on how they answer. Would you like to hear about the next steps for treatment? Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't. Use as a signposting question to segue on to the next part of the conversation in the case notes itself. And how do you feel about this information? Just checking for their understanding and their mental state with all the information that's being given to them. Oh, I feel okay about this. Oh, I'm not sure I want more information. That would also be a close kind of question. So well done, guys. Thank you very much for taking part in that activity. Some great questions coming in as well. We'll be doing more about that in our role play practice coming up. So we talked about two kinds of questions that we want to ask. Let's now look at some questions that we should avoid asking in the OET exam. So take a note of these kind of questions and try and avoid these if they come up. So the first kind of question that we want to try and avoid asking is a compound question. Let me know if you know what a compound question is. So here is an example of a compound question, guys. Have you had shortness of breath or felt dizzy when exercising? This is a compound question because it's actually asking two things at once, where the patient is being asked, do they have shortness of breath or do they feel dizzy? Okay, so what's the problem with asking Two questions in one, really. Well, it creates uncertainty on how to answer the questions. I wouldn't be sure what I should answer here. Should I talk about shortness of breath? Should I talk about feeling dizzy when exercising? I don't know what to ask. So it does create a bit of disorganization, a bit of confusion with the patient. So we should try and avoid asking these two-in-one style compound questions because of that. Yeah, and it can also just dis dis confuse the the question and disrupt the role play. So what you want to try and avoid doing in your role plays is when you're asking a question, have the interlocutor or the patient be confused how to answer because that can kind of throw you off with your confidence and your flow as well. So try and avoid these kinds of, of two-in-one style compound questions, okay? Secondly, we should avoid asking what's known as a leading question as well. So here is an example of a leading question. You have put on weight, haven't you? So what is the problem with this kind of question? Well, note the words, haven't you, at the end of this question. It's making an assumption. And if we're making an assumption to the patient, 
the patient will then feel like they have to answer a certain way. So based on that assumption, it can then be difficult for the patient to contradict the answer, even if they think differently to that assumption. So for example, if I was asked, you have put on weight, haven't you? I would think no, but I might say, mm, I don't think so, I guess, I'm not sure. So it makes an assumption to the patient and that's not very good for their confidence in any other information. So what we want to try and avoid doing is influencing the way the patients should answer. We want them to answer as freely and openly as possible. So avoid these leading question style questions with an assumption based language at the very end. Okay, so the other thing that we should try and avoid asking in the OBT exam are what are called inappropriate closed questions. And there's a few that I have often seen at Swoosh English with our OBT uh, preparation students. And these sort of questions are, do you understand? Or am I being clear? <laughs> now, they're, they're, not, they're not terrible to ask. They're not terrible, but they're not great. And the reason why is because these can be quite perceived as aggressive as and rude. Do you understand? Am I being clear? It's almost like a teacher is speaking to you with this scenario. So we want to try and avoid asking those kinds of questions. Let's try and think of other examples such as, is this okay for you? How do you feel about this? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Those kinds of questions will be more appropriate than these semi-rude, semi-aggressive, and um, inappropriate closed questions. So just keep those in mind. While not terrible, there are better examples that we can ask, and you can take that into your clinical communication in your job after you pass your OET exam too, or maybe in your current job if you're speaking in English. Okay, guys, let's finish up this mini lesson on open questions by doing a quiz. So I've got a question on the left-hand side here. How often do you drink alcohol? What kind of question is this? Is it an open question, a closed question, a compound question, or a leading question? Throw your comments into the chat box, please. Write out your answer. What kind of question do you think this is? I'm looking forward to seeing your comments and seeing what you picked up on this lesson itself. So just think about how the patient would answer this question, answer it yourself, and then think, okay, what kind of question is that based on my understanding of this session itself? Okay, here come the comments. Thank you very much, guys. Keep these comments coming in. Lovely. Okay, a lot of you are saying the same thing. I think that's a good thing because, yes, this is an open question. Well done. How often do you drink alcohol? Well, I drink alcohol sometimes during the week, sometimes at the weekend, it depends. It's not a set answer. The patient has the freedom to speak about it as openly as they like. Well done, guys, one mark. Number two, that is good news, right? That is good news, right? What kind of question do we think this is? Open, closed, compound, or leading? Let me know in the chat box, guys. Look at the language. Look at how it might be answered. Look at the kind of question that we're asking here. Okay. All right. Got some comments coming in, guys. Thank you very much for taking part in this activity. All right. Okay. I'm looking at the comments. I'm looking at the comments. We got a mixture between open, closed, and leading. Okay. Now, this kind of question is a leading question. Okay. So it could actually be an open question. They might say, this is good news, right? Well, sorry, I don't think it is good news, doctor. Sorry. This is good news, right? They could say yes or they could say no. So it could be open. It could be closed. But the problematic language here is this question, right? Right? It's making a judgment call. It's suggesting to the patient that they should answer that it is good news. That's a leading question. And we want to avoid asking leading questions because it influences how we think the patient should speak. We want them to speak as openly as they can. So well done to those that said a leading question. Well done. Okay, number three. Hello, Ryan. How are you feeling today? Hello, Ryan. How are you feeling today? Think how the patient would answer this kind of question themselves. And of course, it helps that maybe you answer the question yourself as naturally as you would like to answer the question, as that might give you an idea about what kind of question that it might be. So let me know in the comment box, guys. What kind of question do we think that this is? Okay, 
quite a consensus here. Well done. Most of us are saying open and you are correct. It is an open question. And it's often the kind of open question that we might start the role play with to build that relationship and establish that rapport. Hello, Ryan. Nice to meet you. My name is Dr. Ernest so-and-so. Thanks for seeing me today. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling blah, blah. It gets the conversation off to a good start, starts establishing that rapport and trust with the patient at the very, very beginning. Well done. Okay. Now, do you feel better knowing what your next steps are? What kind of question do we think this is? Do you feel better knowing what your next steps are? Look at the question. Think about how it might be answered. Answer it yourself. That might even help you with how you think this question should be answered overall. Okay. Compounds. Okay, we've got some quick answers coming in here. Answer as honestly as you would like to and see how that goes. Okay, compound here as well. Okay, closed. Closed. Okay, let's see what kind of question that it is. This is actually a closed question. Okay. Because it's not really a compound question. Do you feel better knowing what your next steps are? I'm not asking, do you know what your next steps are? I'm asking, do you feel better? I say, oh, yes, I do feel better, or I know I don't feel better. So I can understand why some of you thought it was a compound question, but it's not strictly asking me two different things. It's asking me one thing. Do you know, feel better knowing what your next steps are? So it's a closed question, and well done to those that got it. Okay. Have you been applying ice to your injury or taking anti-inflammatory medication? Have you been applying ice to your injury or taking anti-inflammatory medication? What kind of question do we think this is? Look at the question language. Look at what it's asking and think how you would answer this question yourself and then lead backwards from that answer into what kind of question that you think it is overall. Looking forward to seeing your comments coming in, guys. You're doing so good so far. Great uh, great activity today and uh, great answers coming in as well. Okay. Looking at the answers, guys. Well done. Well done. So we've got a mixture of leading, compound, and closed and open, actually. But most people are saying um, a compound question, and that is the case that is correct, guys. Perfect. Well done. This is a compound question. It's asking two specific things here. Have you been applying ice to your injury? Question number one. Have you been taking anti-inflammatory medication? I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, I have been taking applying ice uh, and I have been taking anti-inflammatory medication. It can potentially create some confusion. So this is a compound question. Two questions in one, it better separating that question into two. So have you been applying ice to your injury? Okay, thanks for answering. And what about taking anti-inflammatory medication? Split that style question into two. Well done, guys, in our OET question quiz. We have one more. Have I made myself clear to you? Have I made myself clear to you? What kind of question do we think is this? Might be some comments coming in late, guys. That's why maybe I'm calling out the wrong answer for some questions. That's completely fine, but we'll go through the answers in this presentation as, of course, we go along. So what kind of question do we think is this? Okay, most of you are saying closed. Well done. That is the case. This is a closed question. Closed. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. However, we want to answer. So is it a good closed question? Do we think we should kind of ask a closed question with this kind of language? Do you think it's an appropriate closed question or an inappropriate closed question? Let me know in the chat box, guys. There's a bonus question here. Is it an appropriate closed question or an inappropriate closed question? Let us know in the chat box, please, guys. You're correct. It's inappropriate. Have I made myself clear to you? It's very strict. It's very formal, okay? So we're trying to try and avoid asking this kind of question in the OET exam. Well done, guys, for our quiz. And most of you did it phenomenally well. So uh, give yourself a big pat on the back for taking part in that quiz. You've learned a lot about open and closed questions today, leading and compound questions and how to avoid them as well. If you're enjoying the session so far as well, guys, then please um, you know, um, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, give us a like, give us a comment. Make sure you stick, you um, you follow the OET. 
Facebook page or YouTube page. And you also follow the Swoosh English Facebook and YouTube page for more classes like this and more content that we're always throwing out to help you guys pass your OBT exam. So let's get into our next part of the lesson. We're going to get into our mock speaking practice where you can put into practice some of the things that you've learned today in our question, all about question style mini session. So first and foremost, guys, I'm gonna bring this up on screen. When we get a chance to do some mock speaking practice today, I'm gonna to be asking these kinds of questions to assess you. So a series of questions on linguistic criteria, a series of questions on the clinical communication criteria as well. I'll be giving some brief verbal feedback on lucky candidates chance to do some speaking practice today. Um, just take a note of these and um, we'll be getting into our mock speaking session now. Okay, so let's start off with our first role play card today. Um, nursing candidates, you are up first. Doctors and other candidates, you will have other chances in this session and others, so don't worry, it will be coming very, very soon. So guys, I'm gonna start the timer in a moment for preparing for this role play card. You will see an invite come in to your chat feed. It will say, nurses, come and join. It might come from Switch English, it might come from me. Just keep an eye out for it, guys. Nurses, come and join. There will be a link to join that says StreamYard. So click on that link if you want to come in. And of course, please, if you can, make sure that um, you are able to um, have a quiet background, a good internet connection, ideally a video camera as well, so I can actually see you and speak to you just to make sure that the stream is able to go as well as we can. So keep an eye out for that link, guys. It's coming into the channels now. Sometimes with YouTube, guys, it might be it might be difficult for me to post a link because of the scenario itself. So if that is the case then, guys, then um, maybe come and join on the Facebook channel instead if you want to see that link overall. Okay, guys? So the link has come in now, guys. You should be able to see it. The timer will be starting now, and I will see you all, those who want to join, in a few minutes if you want to come in and join. Looking forward to it, guys, and I'll speak to you all in a few minutes.
All right, guys, and that is time. Was that the quickest three minutes or the slowest three minutes of your life? Depends on how you look at preparation time for your OET exam. So, guys, let's get stuck into our first bit of role play practice today. And I am going to give um, the chance to, I, I wish I could have everyone doing this role play practice with me today, but I have to be selective. So, thank you very much. Of course, you can. Uh, you will be finding out more about how we at Swish English can do and mock speaking practice with you with our preparation courses in this session. I'm going to give my first chance today to Shivam. Shivam, I'm going to turn on your camera right now. Are you ready to come on board? In three, two, one. Hello there, Shivam. Hello, sir. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, sir. Nice to meet it's, you. Tell thank me you for giving me a chance to meet. You are very welcome. It's very nice to meet you. Can you tell me a bit about yourself, where you're from, when you're taking the OET exam, why you're taking sir, the OET exam? Sir, um, myself, Jim Kumar, I'm one of the researchers in India. I'm mm -hmm. from India. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I have to book my exam. I will give my exam on July mm -hmm. of 23rd. Why are you taking and, the OET exam? What do you want to do when you pass? Uh, when I pass my OT, I hope so I will pass and uh, mm -hmm. I will go and join the NHS Trust to work in the UK as my dream country. So, uh, oh, fantastic. She can keep that dream alive. You will pass the OET exam if you prepare the right way for the preparation exam. And that's what we're trying to give you today a bit of practice with your OET yes. speaking. So, I'm going to bring up the role play card here on the screen. Here you go. I'll start the timer very soon, Shivam, for five yes. minutes. You just start speaking when you feel comfortable to speak. Make sure that you yes, breathe, relax. Yes, when sir. we're nervous, what can happen? We, we speak quite quickly. I want you to enjoy this experience as much as possible and just yes, go as naturally as you can. Okay? That sound good? Yes. Yes, sir. Very good, very good, very good. So whenever you are ready, Shivam, you can start the role play, and I will play the interlocutor. I will play, sorry, the yeah, I'll play the interlocutor. I'll play the patient, and we'll just enjoy the role play practice. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, how may I address you during the role play? You can call me Scott. It's Scott. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, nurse. Uh, myself, Chemkwan. I'm one of the registered working this community health center. You are looking conscious. Uh, uh, you, you are looking anxious today, which is cause. May I know the reason behind it? Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about my, my upcoming exam. Nurse, okay. uh, um, I, I don't feel good. I've been feeling awful. I, I don't know what to do about it. I wonder if you can help me. So. Sure. So, uh, Mr. Scott, please don't be take. Uh, uh, please don't be anxious for taking, uh, for worried about your exam. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Could you please brief? May I ask you some question? Yeah, uh, please. Yeah, to find out the reason behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, can you please explain me about how you feel uh, what kind of symptoms and duration certainly um well firstly i'm experiencing times where i'm very short of breath uh, it's quite yeah. scary um my heart starts beating really quickly it's very 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 obvious in my chest and sometimes it's even a, okay. bit pain, a bit of chest pain as well um I, sometimes i think i'm having a heart attack yeah. yes Okay, Mr. Scott, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing me that information to me that uh, in uh, in that manner, some patients are feeling that uh, uh, normally. So don't be take worry about that, Mr. Scott. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you following me, Mr. Scott? Yeah, it's all good so far. Okay. So. I mean, sometimes so maybe, 
Mr. Yes, yeah. yes, nurse. Yes, nurse. So maybe, Mr. Uh, Scott, you are feeling that uh, like, uh, situation, uh, that symptoms due to your um, uh, exam. Uh, you are worried about your exam. That's correct. It's coming up in two months' time. It's a really, really important exam, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm finding it hard to sleep at night too. Okay, so, Mr. Scott, so if uh, if when your exam will finish, so before your exam, patient, uh, who, some students are feeling that condition. Mm -hmm. So, I recommend you to take care care yourself. So. Uh, I mean, so, uh, do you think uh, yeah, this might be yeah. a more serious problem, nurse? I mean, I, I, it seems very serious to me. This pain I'm having. Uh, so, what do you think? No, no, um, Mr. Scott, so that that not be a, a that not much be a serious problem. So mm -hmm. it will be subside if you are um, changing your lifestyle and uh, take a healthy habits like rest and eating well and enough sleeping you have uh, uh, you have taking a good sleep mr score what's that sorry nurse uh, i'm saying that you are taking a good sleep yeah i yeah, i'm trying my best to sleep nurse but uh i'm studying at night and sometimes these panics happen at night so i can't say my sleep is really good so okay mr is good so i i'm just saying that if you are not feeling well to at your home i will suggest you you can come to the community health center for weekly and visit and do exercise with us and we will provide you some relaxation and th therapy in here and uh, it will be helpful for you okay sure how can i go sure. to the center nurse uh, um, I, I will Pro, uh, I will give you the address and all the things of oh, you required. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. yes. Sure. How does uh, how how it sound to you, Mr. Well, Scott? Yes. Can I ask what the what the health center will will do? What will I experience and learn at the health center, nurse? Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm saying that you will visit our community health center. We will mm -hmm. provide, yeah, we will provide you some exercising and uh, some relaxation therapies and it will be improve your condition. Okay, okay, sure. That's good to hear. Okay, well, um, is there anything else I should do to manage um, these symptoms? As, as I already told you, Mr. Scott, you have to take some proper rest and practice to healthy habits like eating well, eating well and take proper rest and enough sleep in in when your bad time. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very so, much, nurse, for your time today. So um, I, mm -hmm. I hope I will clear your all doubt, Mr. Cook. So if you have any concern, please do not hesitate to visit me again. Well, so, thank you very much for your time today, nurse. I appreciate you seeing me. Thank you. I, I'll take the, I'll go to the community health center and we'll see where it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, I will. Uh, I will wish you a speedy recovery, Mr. Cook. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let's end the role play there. Shivam, well done. How'd it go for you? Sir, uh, I'm quite a bit ner nervous. I can see, I can see. That's completely fine. That's completely fine. What we want to make sure is you are not feeling or managing your nerves as well as you can on the day of the, the exam. That's why it's really important that we get lots of mock practice in, in advance in yes, live sir. scenarios so that you know how to channel your nerves in the day as well. Okay, so yes, first sir. and foremost, um, I think there's there's some things that you're doing very well and that's really important. Um, you are um, quite a fluent speaker. Um, I can see that a lot of your hesitation wasn't because you were searching for a language but we're thinking about 
how do I organize where I go next? How do I organize the material on this card? So I think you did quite well with that. I'll go into that in more detail very soon. But what we need to do is find ways to manage any nerves that you're having, any anxiety that you're having as well. Yes, sir. Organize how we can go about this role play card, how we can go about it, okay? As yes, um, you can probably tell yourself there need to be a bit more organization involved. And that's where practice makes perfect. And even putting into practice some of the questions that we asked today, okay? So we started off nice and well. I'll just quickly go through some of this criteria. Start off nice and well. Okay, so you started asking me, uh, hello, how are you today? Uh, nice to see you. Uh, can I ask what's, well, you started off by asking me, I can see you're anxious. That's an assumption. We shouldn't start off by asking yes. some, so how are you feeling today? The patient then say, oh, I'm not feeling so good. I'm feeling very, I'm feeling very anxious. I'm having panic attacks. Okay, well, can you tell me more about your panic attacks? Um, what are your symptoms? And how long have they been lasting? How and how many previous occurrences have you had? Okay, yes, well, I can see that might be panic attacks. Can you tell me what you think is triggering these panic attacks? What, what's causing them? I would say something like, Oh, it's my exam coming up. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear yes, about your exam. However, I want to talk to you about how you can what you're experiencing right now and how we can get over that. Does that sound good to you? Okay, yes, uh, that's good. So it's very normal. First and foremost, it's very normal to feel this way when we experience anxiety, to feel nervous and fearful. So just don't feel bad about yourself. But what I like to talk about right now is ways to make this feel better for you. How does that sound? That sounds good, nurse. Thank you. Okay. So yes. first and foremost, I've experienced exams before myself. I felt very nervous. It can be managed. And I'm going to explain some of this to you now. Would you like to hear more? Oh, yes, I would. Fantastic. Okay. Yes. So first and foremost, if you're ever feeling anxious, go to a quiet space and visualize something peaceful. How about your eating habits? Are you eating healthily? Yes, no. Okay, if you're not, then do this. If you are, that's good. Um, make sure you're getting plenty of rest and make sure you're getting enough sleep. How much, how much sleep are you getting at night? Oh, I'm only getting three or four hours. Well, make sure you prioritize your sleep. Um, how does all that sound to you? That sounds good. How can I do more? Well, I will advise that you go to the community health center Etc. Etc. Et now I did a very rough idea there about how to structure yes. the role play right, on the fly, but you can see the structure that I was having, and you notice I was asking yes. a lot of questions during that role play, a lot of open questions, sequencing what's coming next. Okay. Now I understand that yes, it, it, it's I'm a native English speaker. I've done OBT for a long time. It comes very naturally to me. What we want to do is ensure that you are learning these organizational techniques in the day of the exam, that you're able yes, to sir. put all of this into practice and put all of this into structure and ensure that you are flowing as well as you can. You're asking the questions and you're and you're and you're and you're following up with the appropriate questions. Okay. Yes. Sir. How do you do that, Shivam? Plenty yes, of practice. Sir. Plenty of practice, more and more and more. Okay. So aside from the organization, I don't want to make you feel bad because you're doing a lot of things quite well. And I think you're quite a clear and easy to understand speaker. Maybe just slow down your speaking just a little bit and enunciate your words like I'm doing. So then we speak incredibly rapidly, which we can do when we're nervous. It's happened to me before many times. Yes, sir. It, the words become a blur, right? So slow down, enunciate your words, stress the appropriate words in your sentence for greater clarity and greater understanding. Okay. Pronunciation, yes. intonation, well, pronunciation was quite good for the most part. Intonation could have improved with slowing down, rising and falling when you're asking particular questions. Okay. I think you're a fluent speaker, but I think the reason why your fluency may broke down today wasn't because of you're searching for language, it was because you were just not sure how to structure your role play, etc. You spoke yes. appropriately for a nurse, which is good. And I think you used a good number of correct vocabulary and grammatical structures when you were asking and answering questions. But um, I would need to have more practice for that to really assign that. Okay. Empathy was good when it was employed. Maybe a bit more of that at times when it was more structured. Okay. You listened to me and you answered my queries, but you could have followed up with more appropriate information. Delivery of information. 
Okay, that's where you really need to focus on, my friend. Focus on that delivery and that structure of information to go into a nice flow for five minutes. I must admit, as a patient, I was kind of confused what I was doing. I wasn't really clear why I was going to the health center. That wasn't really well explained well enough to me. So there needs to be extra clarity on explaining that scenario by structuring your role play, asking appropriate questions, and going through it in a bit more of an orderly fashion. So I know exactly what my outcome is, what I'm experiencing, how I can improve it, what my next steps yes, are. Sir. Okay? Yes, sir. But I don't want you to feel in any way dismayed, my friend, Shivam. I don't want you to at all. Yes. The only reason we can get better is we know what we're good at and we know what we're not so good at. So we can start to make improvements in the areas that we're not so good at. Now, the thing is, is that if you started structuring your role play appropriately, um, you learned the lessons on how to do that, you put putting more practice into place, you're more than likely going to see quick, quick gains if you're applying to it. But in order yes. to do that, we need to know precisely where we are from the beginning. Oh, sorry, wrong screen. We need to know precisely where we are from the beginning. And that's what that feedback is going to do for you today. So how is that all up for you? Okay, so thank you for giving you valuable feedback for me. You're very welcome. Let's just summarize. Make sure you're getting plenty more practice in to yes. reduce any anxiety that you're having. Slow down your speaking speed a bit more and learn ways to organize the role play structure okay so organizational lessons for that providing structure criteria are key for you my friend okay sir. thank you sir you're very welcome thank you very much for taking part in the role play today enjoy the rest of the session it was lovely to meet you and good luck with the rest of your oet preparation thank you sir. nice to meet you're you. very you're very very welcome thank you shivan well done today big well done Okay, guys, that was Shivam. How did you appreciate the role play today? I hope that you enjoyed um, going through that role play and maybe reflected upon your own performance with that session today. Think about how you would organize that information, how you make yourself clear to that patient, how you would ask a variety of open and closed style questions to satisfy the patient in their response. Okay, so tell me what you think. And of course, give Shivam a massive round of applause for coming on to this session today, doing it in front of hundreds of people on the OET channel. I want to congratulate him for taking that first step in his preparation and doing that with him. So he should be congratulated for it. Okay, guys, we'll be getting into our second OET speaking role play very soon, but I want to let you know of um, a special resource that we have at Swoosh English. We do a lot of lessons in all subsections of the OET exam. Um, I'm particularly fond of doing the speaking exam because I did actually work as an OET interlocutor and I lived in Melbourne, Australia. And we put together a guide. It's a free multi-page guide on OET speaking. If you'd like to download that guide, I'm sending comments into the various chats now on Facebook and YouTube, as it's a great guide with lots of extra information on the OET speaking exam. I'll go into more detail on the OET speaking criteria, all of the criteria, how to ask various questions, how to manage anxiety, how to establish rapport with the patient, how to deal with difficult patients, how to uh, ensure that you're scoring well in your grammar and your vocabulary, et cetera, et cetera. It's a complete guide. And if you're interested in that, click on the link in your chat box that you'll see here in your chat box, or alternatively, send an email to our team at Swoosh English. So send an email to inquiries at swooshenglish.com. That's inquiries at swooshenglish.com. And my team would be very, very happy to make that guide available to you. It is completely free, put together by our expert team of teachers at Swoosh English. We want to make that knowledge available to you. So click in the link to download your free OET speaking guide or email inquiries at swooshenglish.com. That's inquiries at swooshenglish.com to get access to your free Swoosh English OET speaking guide. Enjoy that, guys. Okay, guys, now let's get into our second role play today. Our second role play will be for our medical practitioners, aka our doctors today. And so like the last time, here is the role play card. There will be a link coming across very soon inviting you to come and join us in the OET speaking session with our OET medical candidates today. Like Shivam, if you can, 
come in with a good webcam, clear internet connection as much as you can, of course, and a quiet background. It just makes the session much more easy for me to conduct with less disruptions. Uh, disru uh, disruptions. Therefore, I can better service you as the OBT interlocutor. Um, get a piece of pen, a piece of pen. What am I talking about? A piece of paper and a pen ready to write down some notes in your preparation time. The preparation time begins now for this OBT speaking role play. So start your time. I'm gonna start the timer for three minutes and I'll join you again in three minutes once it's time to do some speaking. So enjoy everyone. I'm looking forward to our second role play practice today. We're going full screen and I will see you all very soon. Remember, medical candidates for this one, please. Thank you. Okay, guys, and that is the preparation time up. So thank you very much, everyone who's been taking part in your OET preparation uh, for this role play, regardless if you are taking part in not, follow along and enjoy. So I'm going to give um, Yusra a chance to do some OET speaking today. Once Yusra returns, uh, I'm going to add her to the, um, the feed. Yusra, I'm going to bring you onto the camera on the stream in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, Yusra, are you there? 
Hello, Yusra. Yusra, are you there? Okay, sorry, Yusra, I'm going to have to give it to someone else. I'm going to add Bimbo to the feed. Coming in in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, Bimbo. Are you there, Bimbo? No? Oh, my goodness. Does no one want to do any speaking practice with me today? How unfortunate. Okay, I'm now going to give the chance to Namwan. Hello there, Namwan. Hello. How are you today? Um, okay, I'm good. Good to see you. This is going to be our second time doing some OBT speaking practice today. Well done for coming along again. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. And how's your preparation coming along? Um, it's quite good, apart from speaking, as I'm not having a partner of a speaking, so I'm not sure. Mm. So you have to ensure that you get a partner for speaking, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll gladly be um, your partner today for some OBT speaking practice and help you with that element of your preparation. How does that sound? Thank you. Good. All right, cool. Are you ready to get into another role play with me today then? Yes. Fantastic. Let's bring you up on screen. Now, I want you to think about um, the things that we've done in this lesson regarding open and closed questions. Hopefully you can apply some of that logic to uh, that session today because your speaking practice has been great with the last one that I did with you a couple of months ago. So I'm very happy to help you out with that moving forward. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So whenever you are ready, Namwan, begin the speaking and I'll be happy to... Uh, to be your in, to be your interlocutor today. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Kwon Kamon. Um, are you Scott? I am. Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Scott. I can see that you come to see me today. And um, can you tell me what's your what's bring you along today? So I'm here today, Doctor. Thanks first and foremost for seeing me. Um, I've been feeling very tired and very unwell recently. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't, I don't know what's causing it. I'm looking to figure out what it might be. Oh, okay. So you have just a uh, tired or what, what do you mean unwell? Well, uh, I've just been, haven't been sleeping very well. I don't have mm -hmm. energy throughout the day and, oh, I, it's, I'm just concerned about what might be causing that. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very busy. I've got a busy job for one. Okay. I've got three teenage children I have to look after as well. Okay. So it could be that, but it's gotten worse recently. And I, I don't know, it could be something else. Oh, okay. Um, I can see that you are quite worried right now. Could you tell me what is, what do you think? Do you have any idea about what? kind of thing that you are worried about oh well i'm just really concerned it might be an underlying condition something like uh diabetes for example the symptoms i'm having seem to be similar to that oh uh, okay i see so um can i ask you some more questions before we <laughs> go to the other next step together right sounds good okay could you tell me a bit more about the exercise routine that you've done every day <laughs> nothing <laughs> oh. okay so because because you're saying that you're busy at work right so that's, you don't do anything yeah. that's that's understandable don't worry and yeah. how about your sleeping time do you have enough sleeping time during the um, day I, um Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I might go to bed a bit late and up again first thing in the morning to go to my to my busy job. So maybe not that great. <laughs> okay. So I can see that it is um is the kind of unbalanced exercise and kind of unhealthy um, work life balance that can causing a problem of um, unwell. So I would. I'll tell you a bit about the cause that can happen that can cause you having a tiredness or having some kind of this feeling. Is that okay? Please, yes, that would be lovely, doctor. Okay, so first of all, it is mainly 
possible clause that can cause a tiredness. For example, mm. you may have a stress related, uh, you may have a thyroid disease or having a diabetes mm. and you are worried about. It is just one of the cause of that. However, I can reassure you that it is, it is kind of manageable. We will do an investigation next step and then we can see how it's going. And don't worry too much, Scott. You are in a good hand. And I see a lot of patients like this. When we know what caused it, then we can manage you on the right way. How does it sound? Well, oh, that sounds quite frightening. I hope it's not something like that, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's manageable. Um, okay. If I if I did have diabetes, then what, what, what would I be able to do to monitor it and, and, and improve it to get my energy levels back? Okay. So, um, you, you saying this is mean that you don't, uh, you don't aware of any kind of diabetes at all. Can I ask? Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, what is diabetes and how will I manage it if I, if I do have this? Okay. So let me explain that a bit more about the detail of the diabetes. There are two types, type one and type two. Um, most of them may have type two at your age is 45 and you never had a diabetes before, I suppose. But for the type one, it is um, mm -hmm. insulin not producing. So you require an insulin injection. So in your in your in your case, I think that we are more likely to go for a test, and then we can see that how we can manage it. Um, first of all, I would like to suggest you to do um, kind of having controlling your diet to be a healthier diet. Okay. What kind of diet do you um, do you have usually? Oh, it's a lot of junk food and unhealthy food, doctor. <laughs> Okay, I see. So you can just um, just cut down a little bit as as time you will be used get used to it and just more healthier and less sweet, less um, less junk food that will help a lot. Mm -hmm. And also you can uh, monitor a blood glucose at home if you are really in diabetes. But first of all, we need to do a blood test first to see whether you have it actually or not. So okay. you're not worried too much on over the stage. Is that okay? Sure. So next steps then will be to get a blood test. Uh, what else might happen next? Okay. So you will get a blood test, but you need to make sure that you do a fast before because it is very important that we do a fasting blood sugar level. And then if you are actually a diabetes, you return to my visit, you return to the clinic and then mm -hmm. I'll give you a medication to try on. And okay, you are need to modify your lifestyle having more exercise and you tell me that you are quite busy. So just, um, can you think that you can do kind of like walking 10 minutes after work every day, just after work 10 minutes, and then you get doing it well. Do you think you can manage it? I will certainly try to move more. Yes. Yeah, it is. I can, I can guarantee that it will help you with your, with your health. Um, lifestyle okay okay and um, apart from this do you have any other concern or any things you'd like to ask me um no i think you've outlined it very well i just need to be healthier in general and see what the next tests come but thank you very much for your words and reassurance today thank you well we'll, we'll get your blood test in the next room okay thank you bye and there we go, and we're done. Well done. How'd it go, Nam One? Um, I think I aware of more criteria that I uh, will accept, assess. I certainly, can, certainly. I think mm -hmm. I think I think I adapt more of the language of the um, in to be able to meeting the criteria more. Hope so.
<laughs> it's a good thing to say. I hope so, of course. So well done. Let's go through some of the criteria. Great speaking speed, nice and clear, easy to understand for sure. Um, very good clarity. And a couple of small intonation and pronunciation issues, okay? The word balance is stressed in the first syllable, balance, not balance. You said balance, mm -hmm. balance. And also mm -hmm. manage, mm -hmm. manage. The, sil the stress in the first syllable, ma mm -hmm. manage, manage. Mm -hmm. So apart from that, a couple of small pronunciation issues. Intonation was fairly good, well done for rising and falling that they were supposed to do in the sentences. Fluency and smoothness, a few small hesitation errors there, but definitely of a, of a sufficient level, I think, in terms of your ability to speak fluently, fluently and smoothly. Um, didn't use appropriate language and tone. I thought you sounded suitably clinical, like a doctor a bit. I think you maybe could have uh, opened up with the rapport just a little bit more in the role play, just a little bit more. But apart from that, good grammar, and good um good vocabulary choice in terms of your range and your level as well a few small mistakes here and there such as you may have a diabetes we wouldn't say a diabetes just diabetes mm -hmm. but overall pretty good for that only a few minor slips happening here and there so clinical communication criteria overall very good i'm going to focus on the one thing i want you to work on a bit and that is your time management Mm -hmm. The role play came in at seven minutes and 23 seconds. So we want to try and be finishing up the role play roughly within five minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of time for each point. I'll just go back to the previous slide. You have five bullet points that you can see here. Then you have to obviously introduce yourself and close the role play. So you're thinking there's probably about, on average, about 45, 50 seconds on each bullet point. And this bullet point here, talking about the symptoms, what it could be caused. You were speaking about that for almost two minutes. So mm -hmm. try and think of ways that we can be more concise with that information and going through that information as well, okay? Simultaneously, I think you could probably do a little bit better of a job of providing structure when explaining symptoms and explaining mm -hmm. treatments and explaining next steps. Think about your sequencing words and your signposting words Firstly, then next, finally, and then clarify the information. What you were doing, you were clarifying the information throughout. But if we're able to sequence and signpost the conversation more, it'll help you be more organized and it'll help you probably keep on your time a little bit better as well. Mm -hmm. So time management is the one thing I want you to just be very, very careful of. I thought your empathy was good when you did use it, but you probably could maybe feel it a bit more, you know, rather than saying, Look, it, everything is going to be fine. You could have diabetes, but it might not be. I don't want you to worry. It's in the blood test. Whereas I was led to believe, oh, what serious disease do I have here? Even though you said, do not worry. Maybe just brought that up a little bit more, a bit more information. Okay. I thought the role play was structured well in terms of how you flow through it. It's just your time management throughout a little bit more as well. But would I be satisfied? Well, yes. You asked me exactly what I was experiencing. You told me what it could be told me not to worry. You told me what the next steps are and even gave me some advice in terms of what I can do next. You know, eat better, be more healthy and you'll feel more energetic as it is. So well done. Good role play. Very good role play over well, over, over all, sorry. Just think about your time management and your structure in terms of how you sequence yourself through that role play in those steps. Does that sound good to you? Okay, thank you. You are very, very welcome. When are you taking the OET exam? 25th of June. 25th of June? Oh, yes, you've got yes. two, two weeks or so to do so. I'd recommend yes. that you really ramp up your OET speaking practice in that time. Get more of these styles of sessions in with uh, your prep and your practice and start to put into practice some of the, the, the tips and the tricks I've given you today regarding providing structure and organizing your time as well. So however you do that, I want to wish you the Best of luck with those next steps, Nam one. And let us know how you get on as well. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anything else you want to ask me today? No. You're very welcome. Thank you very much and great role play today. Best of luck with everything else that happens with your role plays. Thank you. You're very welcome. Take care. All right, guys. That was our second role play today. Let us know how you thought Nam one 
got on in the role play as well. And also to our first student, Stephen, today, phenomenal work from both of them coming on and doing this OET role play speaking practice with me today. Congratulations to them both. Okay, guys, so let's wrap up today's session. There's a few things I want to go over. The Q&A is coming up, guys, where I'm going to give you all a chance to ask me your questions about OET preparation for about 10, 15 minutes or so. But what are the secrets to passing your OET exam the first time? Well, make sure you have all of these. The first thing, motivation to succeed. Think about your dream and why you're doing that. I think most of you have this. Time. Give yourself enough time to prepare for the exam that it's realistic, it's not stressed, it's not, it's not stressful, it's not frustrating, and you feel like you can manage it. Thirdly, you need tools. You need to have expert tools with OET materials that you can learn from and experts that you can trust in in providing the skills that you need to pass the exam. And finally, support and feedback. That's what we were doing today. We were getting feedback on your speaking, and you need to apply that feedback into your preparation in order to get better and see yourself get better again and again. So think to yourself, guys, do you have all of these? If you do, great. You are on a winning track for OET successful preparation. If not, how can you get them? Well, the first thing that we can do is like earlier, is you can get access to our free OET speaking guide, where we'll go through even more tips and tricks on your OET preparation. We'll go through all the scoring criteria in detail, put together by our expert team of OET teachers, We'll go through a lot more detail, all the things that you need to know about the scoring criteria, how to provide structure, how to demonstrate empathy and rapport, how to um, demonstrate the appropriate language and vocabulary level and accuracy too, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole guide available for you. All you have to do, guys, is download the free guide by clicking on the link that you can see in the chat box to download your free guide and your free via that link itself. I'm just posting these into the the Facebook and the YouTube feeds here, guys, for everyone. So click on that completely free guide, or you can email us at inquiries at swishenglish.com. That's inquiries at swishenglish.com to get access to your completely free OET speaking guide. We truly want you to pass your OET exam, and this is our gift to you to help you in doing so. Enjoy your free guide as you download it, guys. Okay. So in addition to that, guys, um, maybe you're actually prepared to go to the next step of your OET preparation. Maybe you're actually determined to actually start studying with an OET preparation provider. And we at Swish English would love to help you through that journey as we've helped thousands of students pass their OET exams before. So think to yourself, is your exam coming up soon? Is your exam coming up in less than six weeks? Do you need a short-term crash course with those expert tools and feedback to pass successfully? If that is the case, I recommend our OET intensive course. Our OET intensive course is perfect for you because it gives you access to everything that you need to prepare and pass first time. I'm gonna show more information about that very soon, guys. I'm sending the links into the chat box here so you can see how to receive, how to get access to that OET intensive course as well, guys, okay? So the OET intensive course is if your course is coming up in less than six weeks. Likewise, maybe you haven't booked your exam yet or your exam is in more than six weeks away. I would then recommend our one year OET Deluxe course. Our OET Deluxe course will be perfect for you to get access to everything that you need to prepare in the long term for your OET preparation overall. That's our OET Deluxe course. Guys, links are coming in into the chat box. If you're not getting access to anything, uh, whatever reason you you can't see these links depends on obviously where you're watching guys then make sure of course that you give us an email at inquiries at swishenglish.com i'll just bring that up on the screen for everyone to see here okay bottom of the screen guys you can see uh, inquiries at swishenglish.com that's our email address to get access to all of this extra information so what do you get in our oet preparation courses well we're going to give you access to, first and foremost to an exam readiness test, a mini mock OET exam that you can then take well in advance of the real exam, assessed by native English speakers and our course and systems to see how well you get on in the OET exam if you were doing it today, reading, speaking, writing, and listening. We have video courses and all skills as well. 
taught and instructed by our OET expert teachers, reading lessons, video, uh, speaking lessons, listening lessons, and writing lessons with quizzes to consolidate your skills. The corner of our courses are, of course, our live OET skills classes. We have over 14 hours of preparation classes per week on speaking, reading, writing, and listening. They include live mock speaking speaking classes, like we're doing today, where you have a chance to do one-on-one -on -one speaking practice with our expert OET teachers, as well as live writing correction classes, where you can submit your writing corrections to our teachers at any time in the class and get clarity on your OET writing skills. All of our classes are completely recorded. So depending on where you are in the world, what your shift patterns are, your busy medical professionals, our solutions are entirely flexible around you and your personal and professional life. You can study flexibly with our preparation option. Likewise, you don't have to just download or go in, sorry, you don't have to just go into our OVT writing correction classes. We also have a writing correction service in which you can submit your OET letters 24 hours a day, seven days a week to our expert teachers and get feedback with corrections, suggestions for improvement and an approximate grade within 24 hours of submission as well. Perfect for that much needed OET writing feedback that your candidates need. In addition, you probably want to see if you're getting better at your OET results as well over time. Well, once you've done your initial readiness test, you can reassess yourself with more OET mock exams again and again. You'll get access to eight OET mock exams in both of our packages to continually reassess your benchmark again and again. Remember, learn the tools, use the tools, practice, assess, evaluate, re-practice. It's the learning circle to get you to a passing OET score. I don't want you to be down the route of taking the OET exam more than once because you're not preparing appropriately. This is why we have the solution for you guys. So this is what you will get in our OET preparation options. Remember, inquiries at swishenglish.com if you have any information about that, or click the link in the chat box to be taken to the link, which will give you all the information that you need for our preparation courses by clicking the link to the courses themselves. Okay. Now, guys, we love doing these sessions every month as an OET all-star. The next session that we will be doing is our mock OET speaking class. We're going to go through tips for fantastic fluency. I've listened to everyone today. Everyone tells me about their fluency issues that they have. It could be anxiety. It could be linking everything together. I'm going to go through some tips for fantastic fluency, plus more chances for mock OET speaking next month. The next session will be July 15th, 9 a.m. UK time. Take a note in your calendars or alternatively email inquiries at swooshenglish.com and we will send you an automatic link to be set up for our next session on July 15th. We'll get you linked into this session plus all of the weekly sessions that we do at OET at Swoosh English. We have weekly free sessions that happen. So send an email to inquiries at swooshenglish.com and we will get you set up for our next session and our next class. So guys, thank you very much for coming along today. Hope that you enjoyed this session. I've gone over time. It was supposed to be a 90 minute session, but don't worry. I have all the time that I need to help you guys out with your OET preparation. So I'm happy to actually extend this session by another 10 minutes or so to answer any questions that you have about today. You will see that uh, on the Facebook channel at least and um, that my course advisor is here today to give you any more questions about um, our OET preparation options. And I'll be here to answer any other preparation questions that you have. Just simply send your comments into the chat box on Facebook and YouTube. I will be reading them. I'm happy to answer any queries that you have about your OET prep. Okay, so I'll just bring my camera up this way, okay? So I've got a few questions coming in here. Um, are these courses for doctors and nurses? Yes, they are. We have special options for doctors and nurses. So we have the exact same course. We tailor the material for both doctors and for nurses and other professions. So simply click on the link that I've sent into the chat box and you can then join us for your preparation as well. So yeah, all professions, um, doctors and nurses and pharmacists, we have special bespoke courses for. Any other professions, email us and we'll make something available for you. Hello, Dalip. Dalip has said, Scott, can you advise when I should join the intensive? Good question, Dalip. Thank you very much for asking. Dalip, I would recommend that you 
Um, join our intensive course if your time is very short for your OET preparation. So maybe you've booked your exam already, your exam's coming up in less than six weeks. You probably need a short-term crash course in order to make sure that you're over the finish line and you're able to practice all the skills in advance to go into the exam as ready as you can be. So delete the intensive course is for you if your exam is coming up in less than six weeks. Less than six weeks, OET intensive, more than six weeks, I recommend our deluxe course for you as well. Delete 23rd of July, that's a bit more than six weeks. Based on that delete, I would recommend that you have a look at our OET deluxe course. Our OET deluxe course are for those who have more than six weeks or haven't booked their OET exam uh, for that preparation. It just gives you a bit longer to have access to the materials delete, and it's not so rushed. So I recommend our deluxe course for you if you're willing to come on and join us at Swoosh English and our teachers for your OET preparation. Hope that answered your question, Dilip. Thank you very much for asking that. Okay, let's see what other questions we might have here. Uh, thank you very much as well for all your comments coming in. I'm glad that you enjoyed the session today. If you are, if you did enjoy the session, give us a like, give us a comment, follow us, subscribe to us on YouTube and keep in touch with everything that we're doing for OET preparation. And thank the OET team as well for organizing these all-star sessions with um, the premium preparation providers. It's very much welcome. I do appreciate doing these sessions overall. Okay, so let's see. Um, Sana has said, Dr. Scott, <laughs> first time I've been called Dr. Scott, I like that. Could you please explain to us what the difference between signposting and categorization? Right, roughly signposting, Sana, is when you indicate to the listener that the conversation is changing you're changing focus so for example you might say something like okay so now i like to talk about blah whatever it is that's signposting indicating a change in the conversation categorization i think what you mean by that is how we segment the points in a conversation so that'll be a particular conversation and we're breaking it down step by step so firstly next then after that finally that's how we break down those sequencing devices that's roughly what it is. Both need to be employed well in the OET exam because you will have to uh, segment, uh, uh, signpost into another part of the conversation, Sana, and you will have to break down those uh, complicated treatment options or procedural steps that you need to discuss. You can also use that as well to summarize information at the end of the OET speaking role play as well. We can help you with that, Sana. If you have any questions about how we can help you develop those signposting and sequencing skills, then come and join us at Swoosh English, download a free guide or join one of our courses. We'd be more than happy to help you out with that. Okay. Hello, Jacqueline. Jacqueline has said, hi, Mr. Scott, could we write down notes after the conversation starts? Thank you. Unfortunately not. Once the this conversation starts, uh, Jacqueline, you won't have access to your pen. You will have to put your pen down. You can only prepare in the three minutes before the role play begins. So make sure you're ready to go at that point. Hope that answered your question, uh, Jacqueline. Okay, let's see uh, other questions that we have here. How to start a role play after the introduction, says Neha. Um, that depends really, Neha, on what the first part of the role play consists of. What is the first thing that you have to speak? I'd recommend that you start asking some questions at that point about the first role play card, which are typically about why the patient is there, how they're feeling, what their symptoms are. So start asking some open questions on the first role play card point after you've given your introduction. Hope that answers your question. Okay. Dr. Ajif says, I have my exam on the fifth of fifth week. I want to join it. How to join it? Dr. Ajif, you have a look at the comments on YouTube. In your comment feed, there will be a link in the description of the video as well. So click the link in the description to have a look at our preparation options. You can see an email address at the bottom of the screen, Dr. Ajith, inquiries at swishenglish.com. So click on inquiries, or don't click on, send an email to inquiries at swishenglish.com, inquiries at swishenglish.com, and our team will be very, very happy to answer any of your questions regarding any of your preparation questions and options that you have. We're here to help. We will answer your queries at any time as well. So send us an email to our uh, to our preparation 
team and we'll be very happy to help you. I'll just send this email in, guys, once again so everyone has access to it. And um, you can just take a note of the email there or you can click on the link that says questions, email us at swishenglish.com and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your queries about your preparation options. Okay, hope that helps, um, Ajith. Let's see. Um, hello, Christina. Christina says, hi, Scott. I have a question if you don't mind. What is the best way to ask what are the causes, triggers, points of a particular disease or symptoms? That's a tricky question to ask, Christina, because I, I have to put that into context in the role play card that's being asked, okay? But we could ask something such as an open question. Hello, can you tell me uh, what's causing your symptoms? What's triggering your symptoms? Why do you think you are experiencing these? Just general open questions, kind of paraphrasing the topic and using those kinds of questions to set the tone for the conversation. Think open questions. How can you use the language that's there and how can you ask those, Christina? We can help you out with more of those question creation skills if you need at Swish English. Okay, let me see. Uh, hello, Alina. Alina said, whether we need to ask patient's name and age if we know the patient? Um, no, you, if it's a follow-up consultation and you can see a link in the role play card that you know the patient's name already, you can just greet them. Hello, Scott. Nice to see you again. That's completely fine. But if you don't know the patient, you want to ask their name before they begin. Okay. Hello. How can I call you? What can I call you? Hello, Scott. Whatever you need to do. Make sure that if you don't know the patient that you do establish that rapport by asking that question at the beginning. But if you do know them already, then there's no need to double up on that whatsoever. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what other questions do we have here? You're very welcome, Christina. I'll just go over to the Facebook feed here and see what else that we have. Um, hello, Israela. Israela said, can you please help with the settings and how to approach the patients? Okay. Uh, Israel, that's a whole series of lessons by itself. I can't really give you an answer to that in this session, but I will give you some pointers, okay? The first thing that you should do is take a note of the setting. Where is the consultation taking place? Is it in a GP medical office? Is it in a hospital? Is it in an emergency room? That will probably dictate the kind of pace and the setting for the conversation, and it might even help you indicate what kind of mindset the patient's in. For example, a medical center will be more relaxed and more calm. An emergency room might be more stressful and more anxious with long waiting time. So the patient might be worried, they might be upset. Think about that, okay? So think about analyzing that setting and getting a clear idea about how the patient might interact with you on the day. And then depending on the patient's set of mind, then you have to learn how to deal with the various kinds of difficult patients that we have, the upset patient, the shy patient, the anxious patient, the angry patient, and they all do require slightly different approaches. We have a series of lessons on that, Israela, on how to deal with difficult patients and how to make the most of the setting. So give us an email at inquiries at swishenglish.com and my team and I will be more than happy to help you out with your questions and how to do that, Israela. Okay, thank you guys. Great questions coming in. Let's see if we get a couple of more here overall. Um, Jinsi has said, hi, sir, are the writing corrections individual based or is it group discussion? Jinsi, these are individual, individual corrections, okay? So when you submit your corrections to our team, our team will be looking at these individually and sending them across to you in the 24 hours of preparation time. The writing correction classes are small group classes though, so you will have be in with other people, but we do make sure that everyone's writing corrections are submitted by managing our class sizes and ensuring our teachers are up to uh, up to the mark because we have expert OET teachers here at Swoosh English. Now, of course, those individual corrections via our correction service are individual as well. Gen Z, hope that answered your question. Okay, guys, great questions coming in. I've got another couple of minutes. If anyone has any more questions that they want to ask, I'd be very, very happy to help you out. Okay, one more question here from Neha. Do we have to consider details in the background as a doctor or the patient always have to describe these details? As entirely up to you, uh, my friend Neha. Do you think that you need to ask these questions? Do you need to elicit the information from the patient or should you allude to that in the background of the role play card? It depends on the scenario, depends on the patient. So you need to be able to actually do both of those skills 
on the day of the OET exam, elicit or answer on the day of the exam, Neha. It depends on the context. So if you have any queries about how to approach the planning and preparation stages of your OET role play that you're able to put these skills into practice, well then make sure, of course, that you send us an email at inquiries at swishenglish.com and we'll be more than happy to help you out with your OET preparation based on that. Bottom of the screen, guys, inquiries at swishenglish.com. Send our team an email and we'd be happy to help you. Okay, Andy's got a good question. Do we get negative verbal reactions from the interlocutor during the role play that anxious, confused, or angry patients? Yes, you will. Well, you won't always, but you could. The OET role play is designed to simulate real life medical consultations that happen in various scenarios. So you will be dealing with interlocutors who are angry, who are anxious, who are scared, who are upset, who are shy. That's why it's super important that you are able to deal with those scenarios and know how to deal with it in the English language while fulfilling the, the scoring criteria as well as you can in your preparation, Andy. We can help you with that. We have a series of lessons in our speaking lessons that deal with difficult patient types and help you develop the skills that you need to do that on the day of the OVT exam. So if you're interested, Andy, send an email to inquiries at swishenglish.com. I'll be more than happy to help you out with your next steps. But everyone, guys, please download our free guide. Download our free speaking guide. I'm just going to bring this back up on full screen because this is very important. If you've got any doubts or queries about the next steps of your OET preparation, you're not sure if a preparation course is, is for you at this point, I ultimately recommend that you do. Well, then come and look, have a look at our free guide here. So download your free OET speaking guide by sending an email to inquiries at swishenglish.com. That's inquiries at swishenglish.com. I'll be more than happy to give you access to your free speaking guide. Um, we'll go through a lot of the questions that you've asked there regarding organization, difficult patients, how to start the role play, how to end the role play. We will give you information on how to do that if you can, if you sign up to our free speaking guide and then give you more information about what your next steps are in regards to that, guys. So click on the link in the chat box on Facebook and on YouTube. Click in the description of the video as well. The link will be there. We'd love to have you join us ASAP for our Swoosh English preparation, guys. So guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up the session now. It's been lovely. It's been almost two hours. Wow, I need a break. I need a break, I need some water. I need to get a coffee. I need to get on with helping out all the other my other students here at Swoosh English today. So it's been an absolute pleasure having all of you guys in this session today. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I wish everyone the best of luck with their OET preparation. If it's coming up soon or it's coming up later, we'd be very happy to help you out with your OET preparation as an OET all-star provider and OET premium preparation provider as well. We help thousands of students pass their OET exams. If you're in any way uh, in doubt about your OET preparation, you need feedback, you need answers to your questions, well, then we can help you out with that. So thanks a lot for joining us again today, everyone. All of your comments are very, very kind. Thank you so, so much. Like us, follow us, subscribe to us on Facebook and YouTube as well. So there's more information coming in. So I'm Scott from Swoosh English. It's been an absolute pleasure having you guys here today. Take care, and I'll see you again for some more all-star sessions with Swoosh English. Thank you.